Just a week ago, I recommended to Republicans in Congress, specifically to House Republicans, that they should start making contingent on giving money away to foreign countries like the Ukraine and Israel, for example, that we in the Second Amendment community actually get something back, i.e. Americans should get something out of these appropriations. And I recommended that we cut back and prevent monies from being spent on enforcing these newfangled fake regulations by the ATF involving stabilizing braces, unfinished frames and receivers, and the like. And guess what, folks? Maybe, just maybe, someone in Washington is listening to the Four Boxes Diner. Stay tuned, we'll break it down for you when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Dine, a proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans and Israelis, by the way, about the right to bear arms. All right, folks, so exciting news. On October 28th, a couple days before Halloween, I shot a video that said, given the fact we have a new Speaker of the House, Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who I don't know personally, I've never met, out of Louisiana, but he seemed to be conservative and like make America great again, which I'm all good with, and America first, which seems to be what the purpose of the government is. Why would we have a government that does anything but put Americans first? Nevertheless, uh, it looked exciting to me that there was potential for change and positive change at that. So one of the things I did on October 28th is I released a video, many of you probably saw, that said the following. In my very long and I would say successful career on Wall Street as a litigator and trial lawyer, I've negotiated many things worth a ton of money with a lot at stake. And one of the first rules of negotiation, as I see it, is he who wants the deal least often wins. Meaning, if you're willing to walk away from the table and not do a deal, hey, you can often get a better term. That's one rule. The other rule is, as I see it, if I'm going to cut a deal for you or get a, cut a deal with you, I'm going to give you money, I'm going to give you my company, I'm going to give you whatever, I want something in return. We both have to be better off. That's the purpose of entering into contracts. I'm better off. You're better off, right? I buy ice cream. I give money to the person that sells ice cream. They're better off because they have money. And I'm better off because I have money. It's how capitalism and free exchange works. But it seems to me that, as I can tell from outside of Washington, that many Republicans in Congress have no idea how to negotiate, which is really kind of odd. So specifically... If the Democrats want a bunch of money to go overseas to Israel or to Ukraine, and these all may be fine, whatever, or they want a bunch of money for welfare programs for other nonsense, okay, we could talk about it. But we should get something in return. We should get something tangible. So what I talked about on October 28th in my video was, why don't we say, hey, Chuck Schumer in the Senate, you want all this stuff? Great. Here's the deal. We're going to cut the ATF budget by some percentage, okay? And we're going to specifically write in there that no money from this budget or any past or prior budgets or future budgets, you know, anything like that can be used to enforce the ATF's recent rules on, let's say, stabilizing braces, unfinished frames and receivers, weapons, parts, kits, or any of this other crap that the ATF is trying to foist upon Americans using powers of which I seriously doubt they have statutory or other legal authority to exercise. As we've talked about, governments have powers and authorities. They're not always the same. The example I give is the kidnapper may have power over the hostage, okay, or the kidnapped victim. There may be a power relationship there where the kidnapper has power over the victim or the criminal has power over the vic or the crime victim. That is not the same as authority or legal authority. In many instances, as I see it, the ATF and many other aspects of the federal government and the executive branch, embracing the notion that Barack Obama b brought to us as president, that all I need is a pen and a phone and I can still govern as president, I don't need Congress. With that in mind, that it seems to me these regulatory agencies are exercising all sorts of powers over the United States and over the U.S. citizens, and the ATF itself is exercising all sorts of powers over FFLs and American citizens and American gunners and the like. Many of these powers, as I see it, they lack the authority to do so. 
And I'm happy to report that the Supreme Court is hearing some cases this term, including the bump stock case and an NRA-related case that may, and also a case involving the destruction of the Chevron Doctrine that I think will ultimately give rise to good stuff for the Second Amendment community, the gun industry, and people that support freedom generally. Nevertheless, I think it is a great idea, and this is exactly what I would do if I were in Congress and if I were in charge of negotiating, I would not give Chuck Schumer and the Senate anything, a dollar, unless I got my agenda items satisfied, okay? And I would undeniably cut back on the authority of the ATF. I might even specifically put in there that they have to unwind that huge amount of money they're giving for, you know, IRS agents. I might cut back on the huge amount of money uh, they want to spend um, or do anything. I might even actually unwind that so-called bipartisan gun control bill. And here's the thing. Remember my rule? He who wants the deal least wins. If Chuck Schumer in the Senate wants to keep rejecting $100 billion to Israel or $100 billion more to Ukraine, or if Joe Biden wants to veto this, who cares? Go ahead. Because remember, at the end of the day, those, P those Democrats in the Senate and, and Joe Biden, they want to give away our money. They want to print our money. They want to print up money and give it away to these foreign countries. That's what they want to do. Fine. That's what they want to do. We want something in return. And I'm happy to report that as of today, it looks like House Republicans have gotten the message. So it's now breaking news. There's now information out there, and I'll put some links to these articles down below, that indeed the Republicans in the House are starting to specifically write in restrictions on the authority of the ATF under upcoming budgets, as well they should. Specifically, according to some reports, which again, I will link to down below. I think this is from Roll Call, a pretty credible source on some of this factual information, at least. Uh, they write that as the Biden administration reiterates call for tougher gun measures in response to the mass shooting in Maine, an example of total government incompetence, but we won't get into that. House Republicans updated a fiscal 2024 spending bill with provisions that take the opposite tack. You mean the one that respects the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms? Damn right. Damn right. It's about time the government respect our right to keep and bear arms in the Constitution. But anyway, the article goes on to say, House Republicans are looking to use the appropriations process to block, to block, a proposed rule to implement a provision included in the first bipartisan anti-gun violence package passed in years. Goodbye, John Cornyn, you loser. Have no respect for that, man. I actually don't have a lot of respect for anyone that supported that bipartisan gun control bill, but specifically John Cornyn, because he's in Texas, for crying out loud. Total loser, doesn't know how to negotiate. And no, I'm not going to go. I know my name is Smith, but Mr. Smith is not, this Mr. Smith is not going to Washington uh, to negotiate. I mean, I guess I would if I absolutely had no choice, uh, but it's certainly not anything I want to be doing. But if the Republicans don't know how to negotiate, well, we cer can, certainly can teach them. But let me carry on. <clears throat> the gun package uh, widened the definition of engaging in business of firearms dealing, according to the Justice Department. They go on to say that there's also proposed rules by the ATF uh, that they're looking to cut back on with budgets that were published in September that clarifies the circumstances in which a seller would be required to obtain an FFL and run background checks. They also talk about uh, this Republican House proposal <clears throat> prohibiting federal funds from being spent to enforce various rules, along with other provisions that would roll back ATF enforcement against firearms dealers. It also goes on to say that certain senior officials uh, said the president sought to clarify when the law considers someone a gun dealer and must register with the federal government. Um, again, they want to, all in a way to bring us closer to universal background checks, but universal background checks are all about gun registrations. They want to make sure they know where every gun is and every gun owners. We 100% don't want to do this for reasons that we've talked about a thousand times. And of course, it's unconstitutional and illegal uh, that the Congress has always recognized going all the way back to even before World War II, but it's specifically as a side note, and we've talked about this before, in October 1941, October 1941, you're like, Mark, why are we talking about October 1941? Because in October 1941, a few months before the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Congress passed something known as the Property Requisition Act that said that they could take like, you know, plants involving that would make cars and they could convert them into making, you know, fighter planes, F4U Corsairs, tanks, whatever. But there's a specific exclusion that says nothing about the Federal Property Requisition Act could be used to take away the right to keep and bear arms or to take away people's guns or to otherwise infringe upon the Second Amendment. This was in October of 1941, before World War II. I should say, before the United States entry into World War II. So don't kid yourself. Anybody that says that the NRA in the 1970s invented the right to keep and bear arms is full of S 
You know what I'm about to say. I'm not going to be profane. But the point is, they uh, are full of hooey. And again, I just go back to everyone's always understood that the Second Amendment is about the right to keep arms individually. Even the Congress under FDR in the 1940s understood this, and they knew this even before them. But let me carry on. They also go on to say, and this is great news for the Stabilize Embrace issue, that one policy rider from the House Republicans would block funding for the implementation of a Biden administration rule. That toughens regulations on firearms with stabilizing braces, a device that's been used in mass shootings. I don't think any of that, any of that's true, by the way, uh, but that's what they say. And in addition to the language included in the Rules Committee of the House uh, of the House Republicans, uh, uh, the House Republicans, Republican members have offered multiple amendments, multiple amendments targeting the ATF, its director Steve Dettelbach, or other rules passed by the agency. Yes, exactly right, exactly right. You. House Republicans control the power of the purse. This is not the four boxes diner speaking. This is the actual text of the United States Constitution that puts the powers of the purse, the originator of spending bills and budgets, sits with the House of Representatives controlled currently by House Speaker Mike Johnson and the Republicans. So you control the game. You are the dealer in this game of poker. Do not screw this up. You have power and influence. And again, you give them bills that you're willing to sign off on, and you make them pay dearly for their money to go overseas. And if they want to fund all the stuff overseas, so be it. But you make sure, House Republicans, we get something that we want. Okay? We actually want to win for the Second Amendment. I don't just want to not lose I don't just want to not lose ground. I want to gain ground for our Bill of Rights, for our Constitution, and for our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. This is not about not losing. You need to actually win. And one way, House Republicans, we can win is by cutting back on the authority of the ATF and working in various ways to unwind the powers of the federal government, including to enforce that absurd, quote-unquote, bipartisan bill enacted in 2022, literally as we're victorious in the Supreme Court in Nyserpa versus Bruins, only the Republicans could possibly, you know, decide they're going to lose on gun control literally when we're winning on the Second Amendment in the Supreme Court. Only morons would think this is a good plan, and I'm afraid to say uh, we may have a few of those in our nation's capital. But again, uh, I'm not here to cast aspersions except on John Cornyn. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, and we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.